All right, so my number one, uh, I've hinted at it, it's Kill Bill. Mm. I, at this time, I think what was Kill Bill 2004? Um, 2003 and 4? 2003, 2004 kind of era. Um, I was just falling in love with Japanese cinema. Yeah, 2003 was the first one. Mm -hmm. I was just falling in love with Japanese cinema. I just saw Audition for the first time. I was finding Ichi the Killer like maybe two years later because I was on this, okay, spray blood. I want to see everything that has spray blood. Give it to me. Like, I... This really opened up, much like Pulp Fiction did for cinema for me, Kill Bill opened up to these weird, more artsy Japanese movies, and I fell in love with it. The anime segments, I really loved. This is, to me, Uma Thurman's best acting she'll ever do, Um, the best she's ever felt as a leading lady. I just really enjoy her, and it sucks that, like, she got her ass whooped on set and Tarantino was a dick about it, but she also just congratulated him on Once Upon a Time and said she would love to do a third Kill Bill. So, you know, <laughs> maybe she's feeling better. Who knows? Um, yeah. And I would I would love it. I wish there was another Kill Bill because maybe this would rank higher for one. I do like one more than two because one is a Japanese movie. Mm-hmm. Two feels like a Western. Yeah, it um, is a spaghetti Western. It, it's and, his dipping his toes into that. And Spaghetti Western isn't my thing, but that RZA soundtrack is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Like, the whistle song that is now, like, an iconic piece of our lives. You know, just so much in this. Like, um, that stupid song that was in commercials all the time, sang by that little Japanese band randomly. Like, mm-hmm. there was just so much in that movie, that soundtrack. <laughs> it's an assault on everything. It's a grindhouse movie, an oddly black exploitation movie, a samurai movie, anime. Like, it has everything. And I think that's what I love because it's it's Tarantino just – like you said, it's more style over substance. But sometimes I don't love Tarantino's substance. He doesn't yeah. always give me Jackie Brown substance. That's fair. <laughs> um, and so sometimes I don't trust him. Like as much as I like Pulp Fiction, <laughs> the movie doesn't have substance. Like I think everyone's kind of gross in that movie and it's like aren't great people. And I kind of like – much like Reservoir Dogs, I'm like, well, all of you guys can die because I kind of don't like any of you. Um, but Kill Bill, I liked her. I wanted the bride to just get her goddamn daughter. Kill Bill. I loved her list. I was so invested in it. <laughs> and I don't know why. And maybe this was just something. Now, I was going to say, maybe I need to revisit it and it won't be so high. But no, I, I see the times that, like, like, Sophie gets her arms cut off and she says, no, bitch, you're still staying here. Like, I, I laugh every time. We're crazy 88. <laughs> like, everything about it. Lucy Liu is also one of my um, female crushes. Yeah. From Charlie's Angels to that movie, just, goddamn, she's Ballistic awesome. Ballistic X versus Sever. Oh, my God. Her. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. Have you guys done that on the Four Color Podcast? <laughs> Cause no. Is that I a comic it, book? I don't know. I think it might be a graphic novel. But, you know, I would join you for that I'm now looking it up, and it is – it's original. How the hell is that original? <laughs> How is that not a comic book? It has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, Lucy Liu. We should queen. do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we should because it has a 0%. We should do all the 0% movies. Um, but no, I love Sorry. it. And I'm, I'm – it sucks to me, honestly, personally, that yours isn't higher because I wish everyone loved Kill Bill as much as I did. But I guess not everyone can handle Daryl Hannah losing both eyes. Uh, I love Daryl Hannah. Daryl Hannah is in two of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, I didn't know you were a Splash fan. Yeah, I'm a huge Splash fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, Blade Blade Runner and Wall Street. Uh, so yeah. I was going to say my other – god damn, I'm so gay. My other reference was Steel Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> that so I was is – like, One, Alan, which gay movie are you going to give me? Oh, damn, the two <laughs> yeah. uh, I like some Steel Magnolias though. Better believe Sally I grew Field. up watching that. <laughs> we watching the Amazing Spider Man's right now for some reason, and Sally Field, National Treasure. We should precious. Oh, we, we just did that ep- the first Amazing Spider Man episode on Four Color Film. It's I got to get it out today. Uh, I, it. I don't know why I'm rewatching them, but I don't hate them. Spoiler alert! I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Gerald did, so that's a fun episode. Oh, if you guys want me for that Electro movie, I don't hate the dubstep. <laughs> yeah, you want to uh, come in on the second one? You guys can hear me fangirl over Dane DeHaan's weird goblin face. All right. We can do that because I also do not hate Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes, uh, I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> um, You're number one. <laughs> my number one is uh, Inglorious Bastards. I knew it was going to be because, you know, deductive reasoning. But also, I knew it was going to be. Like, this movie, from what I have now get to know of you, and I love that I don't want to say I have an image of you in my head. 
<laughs> but in Chris Bastards, it was to me going to be your favorite. It just seems like everything you've said you've liked about movies, much like I think you kind of kind of probably Kill Bill was going to be number one for me. Like, yeah, I like it. I but why? Tell me why. It's oh, Christoph Brad it, Pitt's saying um, Italian words. I mean, it's all of it. It's every second of this movie. It's the first twenty minutes of it with. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Dennis Minichet, I guess. I think it's the actor's name. And Christoph Waltz yeah. in the uh, in, at the dairy farm. Just that whole exchange is mesmerizing. Like as soon as Christoph Waltz walks onto the screen in that, you're just like, who the fuck is this guy? And then that's just – and the rest of the movie, you're just – he is intimidating in ways that you did not expect a human being to be intimidating. Um um, I love Brad Pitt in it. I love the whole concept of just a bunch of Jews going to kill a bunch of Nazis behind enemy lines. Um, I love uh, Melanie Laurent. Uh, her her whole bit. Her her the Shoshana. Yeah. Uh, Shoshana is a queen, and I just I loved her so much in that movie. I thought I don't know why. Maybe I haven't noticed she if she's in more. I wanted her in more. Like. I thought she commanded that movie. Yeah, she did a few things after that, but nothing huge. Um, but she's great. Like, it, <laughs> I think it gets lost in in the whole thing uh, with you know the movie being called Inglorious Bastards that they didn't really do anything, and she would no. have killed all of these people otherwise, whether <laughs> yeah, they were she, there or not. <laughs> which I maybe something I do like about that. These are these like acts. It's Tarantino when I don't think he's trying to be like a quote unquote feminist, mm -hmm. but he did give me this kind of feminist moment of like, nah, bitch, I'm still doing my thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, nope, cool. You guys have a plan. Cute. So I'm still doing this. And if you guys fail, I'm still burning these bastards. Like, yeah, yeah I love that. And I thought that was so powerful that she kind of took that in her own and wasn't saved by anyone or her plan didn't depend on the dudes yeah. she was g getting her own revenge like i think that's what because i don't think you know the brad pitt and all the jewish characters have their quote-unquote revenge plot mm -hmm. she has the most of that revenge yes and i like that yeah it's beautiful i love the um i love the uh cat people scene <laughs> with, with the with bowie over her getting ready to do this like yes. that's phenomenal i love just I, I love the the face and <laughs> the face in the smoke, <laughs> her, her face being projected out on that. Uh, I love the ending. I love the uh, we're gonna give you something you can't take off and him uh, cutting into uh, cutting into uh, Hans Landa with the knife. I, I love the uh, sequence between uh, Shoshana and uh, Landa in the restaurant with the, with the pastry. Like that's yes. that's just incredibly acting, tense. Like that's, yes, that's such good acting. I, I mean, this movie also introduced me to like Michael Fassbender. Like, yeah, there's stuff before it, but I remembered Fassie in this movie, and I'm like, okay, this weird German bastard. Like, yeah. I want to see more of this creepy dude, and like, I got maybe more of him than I needed now, but yeah. um, <laughs> maybe now I regret it, and then maybe I would have gave it to some of that to like Daniel Bruth, who I like as well, but you know, he does nothing. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's... he got to be a boring ass Baron Zemo. Ugh, yeah, I'll... he's coming I... back. He's coming back. Good. I hope I get more of him. But yeah, I like him. I mean, Diane Kruger's in this. Yeah. Again, national like, national treasure, thought, by uh, which like, I mean star of national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I would say she's not from our nation, but she's of, uh, she's maybe Germany's like national treasure. Her and like Fassi, an Irish German bastard. Where too, is she like, from? She's German. Yeah, Amer yeah, American German actress. Is yep. She's listed as. Oh um, God, I, she's with Norman Reedus. Whoa, that's weird. I. She lets that dirty man into her? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, I have, I that's questions, unsettling. Diane. I would, can I call her? <laughs> I'm like, girl, <laughs> go back to Joshua Jackson at least. <laughs> that fringe money ain't run out yet. <laughs> um, but no, like every moment of that movie, uh, yeah. I, I love uh, Hugo Stieglitz. I love the, the, the Sam Jackson cameo <laughs> as the voiceover to that. Um Mike Myers. Yes, Mike Myers is is it's wonderful. Him and uh, him playing off of a um, old boy that we were just talking about, who I like a lot, Fassbender. Um, yes. That that whole sequence is great. I don't know. I just beginning uh, it. I love Eli Roth as the Bear Jew. I like Eli Roth's movie within a movie. He did Nation's Pride. Yeah, and, you know, 
it's a, it looked like a good movie as well. It's probably his best like non horror <laughs> movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I think his bear. I never thought he was going to be a great actor, but I liked him in that movie. And yeah. I like that his one request was I wanted to kill Hitler because I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get that. That's probably so many Jewish guys like fantasy is like, yo, if I get the chance, can I do it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. You, I love the sequence where where he first appears with the uh, or you know with he he was in the movie before that with the the yeah. lineup sequence, but where he comes out of the tunnel hitting hitting the baseball bat against the wall and yeah. echoing and him walking up to the guy and you know pointing to his iron cross. You get that for killing Jews you know, bravery, and then he just knocks his head off. It's great. And I you know what's funny? You saying stuff like that. This might be his other closest to a horror movie as well because it's scary. Yeah, Much of the there are moments. That, there's moments in Glorious Bastards. I mean, like you said, that first 20 minutes, you know, the ending with the fire and you see her face on the projector. Mm-hmm. That's like low key scary. I mean, if you're like a Nazi, that's a horror thing for the rest of your life. Like, <laughs> I, I just something about the movie is oddly scary and tense. And yeah, I, I, you know, it's five for me, but that's not a bad five. Again, it's, yeah. it's, and I love that it's your number one because. God damn it, it is a good movie, and you made me kind of – I didn't think I wanted to watch it, but I might go watch it. Yeah, it it's something that I it, – it's probably my only Tarantino movie that is in my top ten of, all, of film of all time. Um, let's put it this way. I was 19 when this came out. It was summer of 2009. Our local uh, art house theater uh, was playing it, and I saw this movie so many times that after like the fifth time, the, the guy that owns it was just like, you don't have to pay me any more money for this movie. You can just come in and watch it whenever you want. And <laughs> oh, I did oh. many, several more times. <laughs> that's so awesome. Oh, now now I'm definitely going to go watch this today. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. And, I, again, I think that's so cool. And, good, this this, I, this was a good idea. I'm glad we ranked these movies. And I, it made me, like, love and hate Tarantino all over again. Yeah. All the negatives we talked about, I'm like, God damn, Tarantino. But all this stuff, too, I'm like... You're so good. <laughs> yeah, that this this was a roller coaster ride of, of feelings towards Tarantino for me. <laughs> yeah. His fans that are listening to this are like, "Make up your goddamn mind." <laughs> it's like, you know what? I don't have to. <laughs> I I can understand that he exists as a complicated person, and that comes through from his uh, in his work. And sometimes his work rises above that. Sometimes it's great despite that, and sometimes it trashes it for me. Yeah. Damn, that was that was deep. Good job. 